so we get on to our final guild. If not gruel, then die. And after we're done with the, the, the gruel cards, we have some boring old artifacts and lands, but... Anyway, let's get on with the exciting cards. Axbane Beast is our first green card. Is three generic and a green for a common 3-4 beast. This is just solid value. Like, there's nothing wrong with this card. This this is going to be your curve filler, your 4 drop, and I'd be happy to play it, honestly. Biogenic Ooze. I like how this was like, oh, we're missing a green mythic. How about this? And they posted, the wizards posted this. Uh, three generic and two green for a mythic creature that is an ooze. It is a 2-2. Two -two. When it enters the battlefield, create a 2-2 two -two green ooze. At the beginning of your end step, put a plus one plus one counter on each ooze you control. So this one and the one you just made. You can pay one and three green to create a 2-2 two -two ooze. So it just keeps growing and multiplying and blah, 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 blah. Keep in mind the tokens that this creates are not copies of itself. So if you kill this one, the others stop spawning um, and stop getting counters as well. So this is a very Simic-flavored card. Um, this would be hard to play if you're not really solid green. This is not splashable, um, in my opinion, because you're not going to get the more than the initial two. Um, this card gets really good if you're just, like, green-blue or green-red and full stop. Uh, much more than that, and you're never going to set off the, the third ability on there to create more oozes, which is when this gets good. So, um, this I can see potentially um, if it can live through two turns and get to 4-4, four, four, really good. Um, maybe gets into that standard Jun deck, but the fact that it doesn't grow in toughness for a few turns, this makes it really vulnerable to a bunch of different removals, so might not get in there. Biogenic Upgrade is 4 generic and 2 green. For a uncommon sorcery, it says distribute 3 counters among 1, 2, or 3 target creatures, then double the number of the plus 1 plus 1 counters on each of those creatures. So you could play this, put them all on 1, and if it didn't have any, you would go from 3 counters to 6. If it had a couple, you would go from, say, 4 or 5 counters to 8 or 10. So I, I do like it. It's not as good as the, the plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, uh, but it's fine. It would be nice if there was some kind of fight, but obviously this is better in Simic. Um, also good in Gruul, though, because you're going to have your plus one counters from Riot. Uh, again, hard splash because of the double green, and also there's not a ton of plus one plus one synergies in the other colors. Uh, Bulrock Clan Crushers. Three generic, a red, and a green. For an uncommon Ogre Warrior, it's a 4 4. You can tap him to remove a counter from a creature you control, and it deals two damage to any target. So. This is really good. Um, this is you definitely want to splash in a Simic. It's, of course, really good in Gruel because you have counters from Riot. But this lets you simply tap him to remove one of your adapt counters. And imagine this with the Benthic Bio something uh, that, you know, adapt, give it a counter, loot. This with that is really good because you get to shock to remove that counter, and then you can loot again, and then shock, remove the counter, loot again, shock, remove the counter, loot again. Any adapt one creatures you have, this is going to be really, really good friends with. Um, play it in Gruul, play it in Simic. Um, Rakdos doesn't want it as much because you're not going to have really any counter synergy, but a 4-4 four, for four, 5 in Rakdos, if you have to, is fine as well. But ideally, Simic or Gruul. Cinder Vines is red and a green for a rare enchantment. Whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, Cinder Vines deals one damage to that player. For one generic mana, sacrifice Cinder Vines, destroy target artifact or enchantment, Cinder Vines deals two damage to that permanence controller. Um, so really good uh, potential hose. Like, this could get into um, into that Jun deck in the sideboard to hose against control decks uh, because they are going to play a lot of enchantments. Like we, I've seen them, uh, a lot of you know treasure maps, artifacts like that. Um, I've seen radiant fountains be played, uh, and just whenever they cast their draw spells or counters, this just pings them, pings them, pings them, because they don't always have a ton of life link. There is the healing draft, the gain three draw card, that can be annoying, but they don't have a ton. Clan guild mage, this is our final guild mage, um, and possibly one of the better ones. This is probably. This one and the Orzhov one are kind of up there for me. Uh, the red and green, for an uncommon human shaman, it is a 2-2, two -two, has two abilities. For a generic and a red, you can tap it, target creature can't block this turn. For two and a green, tap it, target land you control, becomes a 4-4 four -four elemental creature with haste until on turn, it's still a land. So, 
that's kind of cool. You can turn your lands into attackers uh, until end of turn, mind you. You can't just keep going with them and being broken or anything, but it's it's solid. Uh, this would be tied up there with me kind of for the Orzhov one for for top yield mages. Obviously, if you're needing these colors, splash for it. If you're in Gruul, play it. These first Gruul split card is Collision and Colossus. Collision is for one in a hybrid gruel, so a red or a green. You have a uncommon instant collision deals six damage target creature with flying. So they, so they, I saw Gavin Vary talk about this a little bit. He said he kind of wanted to mix the the burn damage of red with just the flyer hate of green. So they didn't just want to destroy target creature with flying. That's more green. They wanted to burn a target creature with flying, and they wanted to be six. He didn't say this part, but they wanted to be six so that you could kill Rakdos. Is my my thinking. But Collision is fine. Um, it's a little more niche because it's just creature with flying, but still that's going to be your problem in Gruul usually. So against your blue-white decks is coming in, and Colossus on the other side for a red and a green for a instant at uncommon. Target creature gets plus four, plus two, and gains trample until end of turn. This would be really nice stuck in with Rakdos as well, Happy help you kind of eke over the last few points of damage. Um, the Trample is very relevant in Simic to help get those, again, those last few points of damage from those big creatures, because not a lot of them had Trample, if you remember. Um, and of course, obviously, Gruul is going to be really good. So, if you're in either of those colors, Rakdos or Rakdos, Gruul, or Simic, in a lot of those colors, you're going to have trouble with flying, less so in Simic, but still. Um, so, either of these cards have a very playable. So, if you're anywhere near these colors, again, play it. Now, here's the main event of the evening. Domri, Chaos Bringer. It's two generic mana, a red and a green. So let me know what you guys think about these cards in the comments below or in chat if you're hanging out. Um, for a legendary planeswalker, Domri is mythic, obviously. Uh, this comes in at five loyalty, has plus one. Add red mana or green mana. If that mana is spent on a creature spell, it gains Riot. Cool. So minus three. Look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal up to two creature cards from among them and put them into your hand, but the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Uh, minus eight. You may you get an emblem with at the beginning of each end step. Create a four four red green beast creature token with trample. Okay. So a lot of people's first test for planeswalkers do they protect themselves? Jomri here does not but he's in the kind of deck that is going to be very creature heavy anyway, so I don't think he needs it as badly. As you pointed out, Hasty Carnage Tyrant. Yes, please. So turn five Carnage Tyrant with Haste. Seems pretty good. Um, maybe even turn four. Like if you've got Domri out turn three, you can turn four Carnage Tyrant with Haste. That seems pretty good. Um, minus three... And what Domri has usually done, uh, you gotta go looking for a creature. In this case, reveal up to two. Put them in your hand, put the rest on the bottom. You don't even put them in your graveyard. You put them on the bottom, you get them back. Uh, minus eight, you just, you win. You constantly make red-green beast creature tokens with trample. Um, Domri, I think, is easily the best planeswalker of the set. Um, is going to be played the most. This is, Domri is one of the reasons why either just red-green Stompy possibly Jund uh, is just going to be a deck. Jund good cards is just going to be uh, be a good deck. So, can you imagine, um, you know, plus one Domri, uh, play another generic black black and play that 4-4 four, four, um, flying trample with, with Riot? And now it's a 5-5? Five, five, or, yeah, no, sorry, now it's a 4-4 four, four with Haste? Or it's a 5-5 it's a five, five flying trample and just like, there's so many good things that Dombri can do, and it's so easy for him to do them. That's the thing. Um, which, yeah, Dombri is going to be a good card. If you open him, play him in seal, limited, it's awesome. It's going to be in standard. He's going to make a splash. It's going to be played probably the entire time he's in standard. It's, yeah, just do it. And raise four runners. Five jerk man and three green for a rare. Got to come down off that Dombri high. Uh, for a rare 7-7, seven, seven, has Vigilance, Trample, and Haste. When it enters the battlefield, other creatures you control get plus 2, plus 2, and gain Vigilance and Trample until end of turn. Yeah, because there's the enchantment that gives Riot, Domri gives Riot, and the creature itself can have Riot. Right? Um, so this is what they've called a... Uh, oh... 
I had it before I read Jet. Um, there's an old card you play with elves that gives all the elves haste and plus a bunch, plus a bunch. This is a mini version of that. Um, this could potentially top out the curve of that Jund deck uh, because if it doesn't trample haste on its own, so obviously you just give it the counter and it's haste on its own. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you get to resolve each riot. Riot stacks. If you can give something, so if you plus one Domri and play something with Riot, it gets a plus one, plus one counter, and haste. Hey, hey, hey. Um, Crater of Behemoth. Yeah, Crater of Behemoth was the one I was thinking. Um, so this is kind of the, the, the cheaper, lower-end version of that. It doesn't give everything, because Crater of Behemoth gave plus X, plus X, for X is the number of creatures you control. This is just plus two, plus two. Shucks. That's too bad. Vigilance and Trample. So it gets everything big enough where it's probably, A, probably going to survive, B, where the Trample will matter, and just Vigilance, because in case anything survives and your opponent lived. Who knows? But this could potentially top out that deck. Um, it's plenty fine. Um, if you have a couple of ramp creatures, even get this out earlier, it's going to be good. This would be the absolute top of my curve in in uh, limited or sealed, but is just play it if you're going to be open. This is a bomb rare as well. We've seen some not so bomby stuff that have been rares. This is just open it, play it, have fun, and probably gets into standard as well, I'm thinking. Enraged Ceratok is two generic and two green. Pretty uncommon Rhino. It's a 4-4. Can't be blocked by creatures power two or less. This is good old value. 4-4 um, for four, four, four that can't be chumped. Easy enough, right? Um, so your 1-4s can't block this. Your 1-1 one, one spirits can't block this. Your guild mages can't chump this. Nothing. Like, none of those can. It has to be a 3x at least in order to block this. And that just makes it, A, evasive. Believe it or not. If your opponent just has a bunch of little cheap stuff, they can't block this. Um, and worst case scenario trades off with their four X or X four, right? And oh no, you lost your uncommon. Still, it's not it's nothing big. It's I I really like Enraged Air Dog. I play a couple of these very gladly. Frenzied Arynx is two generic mana. Arynx, Arynx, two generic mana and a red and a green for a common cat beast. It is a three three with riot and trample. Uh, you can pay four, a red and a green, to give it plus three plus O oh until end of turn as well. Um, depending on the board state, I you know if it's if this can get through uh, as a three three with haste, cool, do it. If not, this I feel like I usually want to put the counter on, personally, because uh, the trample to get more damage over for that trample later, and it's common. This is kind of your your premium riot common, in my opinion. I again play a couple of these and be pretty happy about it as well. Gatebreaker Ram, two generic and a green for a uncommon sheep. Sheep, bah. Uh Gatebreaker Ram, I've been doing this for like four hours, give me a break, okay. Gatebreaker Ram gets plus one plus one for each gate you control, so this is the green gates matter card. As long as you control two or more gates, it has Vigilance and Trample as well. So, again, really good card to splash, um, because the more gates you have, the better this is. And this is just a persistent effect. This isn't when you play a gate, this isn't... You know, when you play this, how many gates do you have? This is, the more gates you have, the constantly better this is. And for that reason, I think this is the best Gates Matter card. Um, but, like I said, it's if it's the best Gates Matter card and it's easily splashable, play it in any deck you can. Uh, I'd even play it just as, just as uh, if you're playing two colors and you have a couple of Gruul Guild Gates, play this, and it might be a 3-3 three, three for three. And that's fine. It might be a 4-4... Four, four, um, for four of Vigilance and Trample for three mana. That's even better, but... So, uh, this is the base of the Gates matter... Best of the Gates matter creatures to me. I, I do enjoy myself a Gate Breaker Ram. Gift of Strength. One generic mana and a green for a common instant. Target creature gets plus three, plus three, and gains reach until end of turn. Um, solid trick to have in green. You do this onto one of your Trample creatures, or you do this when the blue-white player attacks with their, their big flyer. You do this to your 3-3... Three, three, eat it, probably, um, or somebody attacks with a Rakdos, your 3-4 jumps up there and, and eats it. The 4-4 four, for four, 4 we just saw would kill Rakdos for 2 mana. That's good, right? Um, give of Strength, I'd play one. Um, I prefer the fight mechanics, because this is so conditional into a lot of stuff has to happen and be right for you to play this card and for it to have its best effect, so I prefer the fight mechanics in green to for removal, if you can help it, but give of Strength, I'd, I'd play certain one, certainly one of these as well. Growth Chamber Guardian is one generic and a green for a rare Elf Crab Warrior. Awesome. Uh, it's a 2-2. has a 2 and a green to adapt to. 
Whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are put on Growth Chamber Guardian, you may search your library for a card named Growth Chamber Guardian. Reveal it, put it into your hand, and shuffle your library. So it's fine on its own, simply because this will attack on turn three as a 4 4. So that's fine. You aren't going to get the other part of this in 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 limited. Probably not. Anyway, because it's real good, probably people are probably gonna be taking it. A, because it's splashable, because it's a single green on both its adapt cost and its mana cost for the creature itself. Uh, and B probably not going to do much else after the fact, because you're only going to get one if you happen to get one, so the adapt isn't going to happen a ton. You can search, that's nice, you aren't going to find one though, but um, standard, I don't I don't think it's good enough for it, unfortunately. Yeah, you can find them, they can kind of chain and stuff, but I don't, I don't think it's going to happen for standard. But limited, just play it at, as a 2-2 two, two for 2, and as a 4-4 four, four for 3 on turn 3. Just play it expecting to be that. Gruel Beastmaster is three and a green for an uncommon human shaman, has Riot, and is a 2-2. Whenever Gruel Beastmaster attacks, another target creature you control gets plus X plus O until end of turn where X is Gruel Beastmaster's power. Um, so when you declare attackers, you can give something else plus X plus O, preferably something with Trample, if you can help it, maybe. <laughs> um, but this is the kind of card where, again, either you want to play it with haste because something else is attacking with it, or I just on default I might want to play this one with the counter, just to, so that other creatures can get a bigger buff, and that this can survive attacking into other things as well. Um, but yeah, I, I would like a Gruel Beastmaster. It plays well with counters, plays well with other creatures, and that's what Gruel's going to be doing. Gruel Spellbreaker. Oof. Yes, please. This is one of the first cards they spoiled, and one of the best cards in the set. Uh, generic mana, a red and a green for a rare Ogre Warrior. It's a 3-3 with a Riot, so it can be a 3-3 with Trample and Haste. Uh, all, big thing important being, as long as it's your turn, you and Rule Spellbreaker have Hexproof. So they can't kill this on your turn. They just can't. Uh, because they can't target you to sack it, and they can't target it to kill it. Um, they straight out pretty much said the reason they printed this is uh, Settle the Wreckage. You can no longer be settled if you have this card out, basically. Um, which I don't mind. I've played it. I've played with Settle and I've played against Settle, and it's a really good card. It saved me. Um, I have been able to rebuild from being settled, but um, it is harder to play against. They say it's a little bit much, so they just want to really tone it down, cut back the usage with Rule Spellbreaker, and they have semi fixed it with some of the removal we saw like the Orzhov card where your target opponent just sacks the biggest thing they own so that's how you get rid of card Shiron to me um, or the, the the tower that makes something lose hexproof the land that's how you kind of get rid of card Shiron these kinds of answers but uh, Gruel Spellbreaker is needed and is a really good card uh, play these in limited this will be played in standard this is going in Jund pile of good cards in standard so play it in any deck that can Gruel, Simic, Rakdos, anything you can in uh, in sealed, and it'll be fine for you. Guardian Project. Three generic mana and a green for a rare enchantment. Whenever a non-toe creature enters the battlefield under your control, if it doesn't have the same name as another creature you control, or a creature card in your graveyard, draw a card. So basically, if it's unique, which sealed, limited, so you draft, it's usually going to be. Uh, so this card is actually weird because it might be worse in standard than it is in limited. Um, granted, turn four, do nothing, but Gruul is the kind of thing um, where they can usually take a turn off because they're playing really big, powerful threats already. And this is the kind of thing similar to the Explore enchantment, where this just adds value onto all of your additional creatures. Um, note it's non-token, so you don't really want to splash this in like Orzhov or something like that. But um, either green, Gruul, or Simic, this is just fine in, because it gets you drawing cards, especially in Gruul, because red-green, not a ton, draw spells in red-green. So, uh, Guardian Project, any deck uh, where you can play it, do it. Incubation Druid. This is generic and a green for a rare elf druid. This card is really going to be really good and probably in standard as well. It's an O2. It has a couple abilities. One says tap, add one mana of any type that a land you control could produce. If Incubation Druid has a plus one plus one counter on it, add three mana of that type instead. Um, you can also adapt it for three and two green to turn it into a three five. So it's good early, right? It's good late because it's 3-5, it can even attack, 
or I can tap for three mana to help get out your giant um, crater hoof. Excuse me, your giant crater hoof behemoth uh, impression card. Um, so it's just really good. Um, if you open this card, you're going to play it because it helps your ramp. Just plain old ramp. Um, this I think is going to make standard as well, just because it's good early, good late. Yes, it's little. It's O2 survives all the one damage stuff. It doesn't survive all the, the big things, but few do. That's why they're the big things. Um, but Incubation Druid, solid card. Be happy opened it with play it with it. The double green adapt cost makes it hard if you're not Gruul or Simic to activate it, if you're just splashing for it. Um, but still, if you're Simic Gruul, play this card if you open it. Congrats. Mammoth Spider, four and a green for three, five. Uh, rare, sorry, rare, well, common spider with reach. Again, if you're in green or splashing for green, you're playing this, because if you're in green or splashing for green, flying might be one of your weaknesses, um, or at least not as good as some of the other colors are at it anyway. So, Mammoth Spider, <laughs> Spitro Gigante. Uh, I'm playing it every time. At least one copy. You're not playing, like, f three of these or anything crazy, but value creature, the reach. If it didn't have reach, it'd be a little more iffy, um, but it's a spider, so it does, and you're going to play it. Nikaya of the Old Ways, three generic mana, a red and a green for a legendary creature, centaur druid at rare, uh, is a 5-5, five, five, and you can't cast non-creature spells. Whenever you tap a land for mana, add one mana of any type that land could produce, or that land produced. So it doubles your land, um, is a 5-5 five, five for 5, which is fine, and you can't cast non-creature spells. So if you're in the green-red gruel deck, this is good. Um, might want to play this in like a Jund limited deck just so you have ways to sack her just in case because sometimes you just got to kill other things with spells. So anytime something like this cuts me off of casting the kinds of spells I want to cast, it gets me a little nervous, but 5-5 five, five for 5 is hard to turn down, but if you don't have a lot of fight things, like creature fight, which I'm not even sure if there are, we haven't seen any yet, um, I w I'm a little shy about putting her in a deck. It's really good commander. I would play this in commander all day, and just because you can put all the ETB fight, ETB do this, ETB do this. Um, you don't have to re rely as much on the other things, but uh, that makes me nervous, and I don't like to be nervous. Open the gates is a green mana for a common sorcery. Search your library for a basic land card or a gate card. Reveal it, put it into your hand, shuffle. Mind. Um, this is good if you're playing green and you're splashing another color. Um, this is how you go find it. One green mana source your speed, it's not going to get much better. Turn one, brunk, I'm fixed for the rest of the game. It's pretty good. Uh, if you're just playing two color, probably not, honestly. If you're playing three color, throw one of these in there for sure. Rampage of the Clans. Three generic mana and a green for a rare instant. Destroy all artifacts and enchantments. For each perm destroyed this way, its controller creates a 3 3 green centaur creature token. Um, I don't know how I feel about this card, just in that it create, gives our opponents a lot of creatures, and that's usually not good. And, um, hmm, yeah, so it's in limited. No, there's not enough uh, artifacts or enchantments out there for this to be worth it. So, and so if it's not good enough for limited, is it good enough to be in standard? I don't think so. Not good enough in, in Jund. It's not good enough to, to happen. There's not that many enchantments and artifacts out there running around. Maybe in, like, Aether Revolt standard, but not now. Rampaging Rendhorn. Four generic mana and a green for a 4-4 four, four with Riot. This is fine. It's either a 4-4 four, four with Haste for 5 in green, or a 5-5 five, five for 5 in green. Which is fine. Play one or two of these. Do it. Ravager Worm. Play some of these, too. These are also good. A 3 generic mana, a red, and 2 green for a mythic worm. It's a 4-5 with Riot. When Ravager Worm enters the battlefield, choose up to 1. Either Ravager Worm fights target creature you don't control, or destroy target land with an activated ability that isn't a mana ability. So one of the one of the flip lands, for example, or the, the, that, land, the that creature loses hexproof, the tower land. Um, but anyway, for 6 mana, bomb creature, could be a 5-6, could be a 4-5 that kills something when it comes in. Um, play it. This is probably going to see standard play because they made it good enough to see standard play. Uh, again, it eats something when it comes in, or it kills their 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 land, their utility land when it comes in. And they would only do something like that if they wanted it to see standard play, or 
didn't want to make it good enough that, okay, this is Carnage Tyrant, it's going to see standard play. They just wanted it to, to be a little scalpel. They're doing a lot of that, if you haven't noticed. They want things to be solved. Okay, this is going to solve, carve that out, that problem. This is going to solve, carve that out, that problem. Um, and that's what Ravager Worm does. Regenesis. Three generic mana and two green for a uncommon instant. Return up to two target permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. Cool. Um, one of these is usually fine. Um, so that later on in the game, if you've played a bunch of cards and creatures and they've died, because magic hat, because it's magic and that happens, let's say you get them back. Say even at the end of your opponent's turn, you can get them back. Say you hold up adapt mana, they don't do anything because they don't want you to adapt. Play this at the end of their turn, get those things back. Um, even just wait a turn, block some things, end of their turn, get your blockers back, play them again. Um, so I play a copy of Regenesis, not more than one, but I play a copy. Rhythm of the Wild is the enchantment I was talking about earlier. Uh, it's a generic, a red and a green for an uncommon enchantment. Creature spells you control can't be countered. First of all, that's awesome. Uh, Non-token non creatures you control have Riot. Uh, I think this might even be good enough to see standard play. If you're on the play, it sneaks in under almost all uh, of the, the counter spells. Yeah, yeah, that's I, I have seen people talking about that, and I'm honestly not sure if for that's the thing for new players. If they've played Arena, that would do it, and it it makes it less of a not puzzle game, less of a strategic game. In that, I was like sideboarding because I'm I don't I don't mean to toot the horn, um, but I've always been good. Like, okay, if they're playing this deck, I'm playing this deck. What are the answers to my deck? What are the answers that they have access to to my deck? What are the answers that I have access to to their answers? And then I and switch it around to that. So I've always been fairly good at that. So if that removes it in draft, honestly, in draft, I don't mind. I get more games to draft in, whatever. Um, usually there's only one or two cards you can bring out of sideboard draft anyway. I just hope it doesn't. It's probably, I don't want it to make its way into standard. I really don't. Um... And it has to stay in Modern, or else Modern and Legacy and all the older formats go nuts with just, okay, I'm going to play Solitaire and try one on turn four. Um, but I hope it doesn't make it way in for Draft. Honestly, for me, it's fine. Like, I don't care enough about Draft for it to be fine. Um, for FNM, okay, at higher levels, like GPs, Pro Tours, it should say best of three there. FNM, whatever. Uh, but competitive things stay there keep the best of three there that's when you're playing for money when you're playing for for keeps as it were uh keep a best of three there that's my opinion about about that so for f and m's casuals best of one for me is my opinion is those are fine best of one um for competitive scene that kind of stuff should stay best of three next card anyway <laughs> generic and a green for a common instant uh, root Snare, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn. Your good old Fog. Turbo Fog gets another friend, because it needed it badly. It can be a blowout if your opponent goes all in and swings, or but I, I don't usually like playing too many of these in, in, in Limited, or too many of these being one. So, no thanks. Sagittarius Volley. Two generic mana and green for a common instant. Destroy target creature with flying. Sagittarius Volley deals one damage to each creature with flying your opponent's control. Um, Orzhov deck is terrified of this. Um, luckily enough, it may... Like, I, I usually like to, to keep one of these in a green deck, just going in blind. Um, because most colors are going to have something flying. I want to, but it's coming up really quick. And I have most of Lantern together, but I'm missing the expensive parts of Lantern. So... It depends on money, and I usually have to pay taxes, but we'll see. There's GP Calgary coming up in March, for those who aren't in, it's modern. Might make it in, we'll see what happens. It's just a little far away to plan for me for right now. Couldn't, I don't want to commit right now and have people plan on it. And da -da -da. Uh, Cerule Caretaker is a green mana for a 0-3 defender. Tap, tap an untapped creature you control. Add one mana of any color. Uh, it's a lot to add one mana to ramp. You have to tap two creatures to ramp one, that's a lot. This might this might be the too bad ramp creature to play, because um, you need to have a lot of creatures and you gotta be playing something worth it to tap two of your creatures down. So 
might play one, and I very, very rarely want to tap in order to play one. Have they said what the side events are going to be yet? About, like, just drafts and whatnot? Soraform Hybrid is generic and a green for a common human lizard warrior. Uh, it's a 2-2, two -two, and it has four generic mana, two green to adapt four. So it's 2-2, two -two, you can turn it into a 6-6. Six -six. Good early, good late. Uh, I'd take a couple of these pretty gladly, honestly. So good on you, Soraform Hybrid. Get in there, bud. Savage Smash. I love the flavor text on this. A Gruel Berserker is never unarmed. Generic, a red and a green. For a common sorcery, it says target creature you control gets plus two, plus two until end of turn, and it fights target creature you don't control. This is the kind of removal you're going to get in Gruul. Even if you're splashing, like in Rakdos, I would even play this. In Simic, I would play this. It's removal, right? Bombs removal. Play it. Savage Smash. Do it. Yeah, that's cool. So I haven't done Ultimate Master Draft yet. They do them here on they've done them here on Sundays during the day, and I work on Sundays during the day. Uh, Silhano Wayfinder is generic and a green for a two-one uncommon elf scout. When Silhano Wayfinder enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards uh, of your library. You may reveal a creature card or a land card from among them. Put it into top of your put it on top of your library. Put the rest of the bottom of your library in a random order. Previously, you've got to put this into your hand, I believe. Um, so that's where, because you get to, okay, next turn is going to be that. And then, uh, I don't know, that makes me just a little nervous. Um, if it was put in your hand, it would be making standard. If it's put on top, it's fine, but, I don't know, it's, you get to rest on the bottom. It's okay, I don't know if I'm going standard. I'd play one in seal just because it's a 2-1. That makes you let you kind of dig for something, but... Not much more than that. Steeple Creeper. Steeple Creeps. Uh, there's a two and a green for a common frog snake. There's a four two. So this is what I talked about when I said earlier that we've paid three for four twos. Because we had a four two in Rakdos, but it was four mana. So that's, this is better than that already. Um, three and a blue. Steeple Creeper gains flying until end of turn. Because it's a frog, so it can jump. <laughs> um, but I would for sure play this. Turn three, you can play it. Turn four, you can get in for four. If they have a, the 1-3 or the 1-4 blockers, it kills that and lives. And you can even use it as a blocker. You can jump defensively, obviously, as well. So it makes them think twice about getting in with their spirits. Because you just E1, E1, E1. It's a good card. I'd play a couple of these, honestly. Obviously, Simic, it's hard to get out of there. You could play it in another color if you're splashing blue. But don't just play it as a 4-2. Play it if you're playing blue as well. Stony Strength for a green. You can cast a common instant. It says put a plus one plus one counter on target creature control and untap it. So you can do this as a combat trick. You can do this to set off uh, kind of those adapt triggers that some cards have. Um, so it's a solid card. I play a copy um, just kind of as a combat trick. Uh, or if, especially if you're in Simic and need to set off a bunch of um, a bunch of adapt triggers as well. So this is a good card. Sunder Shaman is our final 2-2, two and two, and the best one, in my opinion. Uh, it's 2 red and 2 green for a uncommon Giant Shaman. It's a 5-5, five five, so the biggest one. Sunder Shaman can be blocked by more than one creature. Whenever some Sunder Shaman deals combat damage to a player, destroy target artifact or enchantment that player controls. So again, they're scalpeling out answers for things. Um, so this cannot be teamed up on chump block. This has to be blocked by one creature if they block it at all. So it's evasive in a way. Uh, it has utility in that it can destroy a enchantment or artifact they control. And it's a 5-5 five five for 4. So it's good. Um, obviously if you're in Gruul, play it. Otherwise it's kind of hard to splash and you don't want to stretch it too, too much. Sylvan Bush Strider uh, is 2 generic and a green for a 3-2. When it enters the battlefield, you gain 2 life. It's fine. Again, this is kind of the 20 to 23rd creature for me, but it's fine. Again, you can splash it into... I wouldn't splash just for Sylvan Bushrider, but if I'm in Simic or Gruul, this could potentially be in there for one of my creatures. Territorial Boars. Generic and a green for a common 2-2 boar. Whenever a creature with power 4-4 four, four, with power four or greater enters the battlefield under your control, it gets plus one plus one of Vigilance until the end of turn. But it's fine. It's nothing special, but it's fine. Um... Uh, it's bear with upside in green. I think we've seen better, because uh, it's just temporary vigilance and 3-3. And three, three. But it's fine. I wouldn't be embarrassed to play it. Uh, we get our 
rare uh, gruel split card called Thrash and Threat. So our Thrash half reads, target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker you don't control. So it's it's not it's the better fight. I don't know if this has a particular term term termed with it because the uh, other creature doesn't fight back, right? So it's a one-way damage. So this is really good in Rakdos because it's red, red, green, green. I don't I mentioned that. Uh, well, sorry, it's hybrid red, green for two. So it's a red or a green and a red or a green. Um, so you can splash this pretty easily um, into any deck that it can splash into, and it's just a solid removal spell. So immediately, Thrash makes the cut. Threat says uh, is two generic mana, a red and a green for a rare sorcery. So first half is instant, this half is sorcery. Create a four four red and green beast creature token to trample. That's also fine. So any deck you can put Thrash and Threat in, put Thrash and Threat in. Sorry, I'll just zoom over so you guys can see that. Um, yeah, a bit like Savage Punch, Bear Punch. Or I, the first one I remember is Fall of the Hammer from Theros did that. Um, that was real good. Titanic Brawl. Ooh, no, this way. Other way. That one. There we go. Titanic Brawl is generic and a green for a common instant. The spell costs one less to cast. If it targets creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it. Uh, target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. So it's two mana removal instant for this effect is really good. Um, that can potentially only cost green because you're getting a lot of counters in Gruul. You're getting a lot of counters in Simic. That um, not Sultai. We talked to this on the last Magic stream. The the combination of Simic and Gruul is going to be really hard to overcome, I think, uh, because those two synergize so well together. Um, even better, I would say, than Orzhov and uh, and Rakdos. But I just personally I want to play Orzhov. That's my my play style. So I acknowledge that it probably won't be as good. <laughs> Teamer, thank you. Well, forget all these things. <laughs> Back in my day. It was rug. <laughs> uh, tower defense is generic and a green for an uncommon instant. Creatures you control get plus one, plus five again. Rage Slim turn. Um, the only reason I don't like this as much is that it's not. This card is not going to kill anything. This card is going to stop you from dying, but that doesn't help you beat your opponent. Um, creatures you go plus one, plus five again. Range. You can block a bunch of spirits. You can block a bunch of birds. Whatever. But those birds and spirits are still going to be around. Probably. You know, like in your Gruul deck where stuff looks flying over your giant ground creatures, okay, maybe you kill them, but this is just a little... Mm, I'd rather have the, the fight cards or the kill a creature with flying cards than, than tower defense here, unfortunately. Trollbred Guardian. It's four generic mana and a green for a 5-5, five, five, so immediately five mana for a 5-5. Five, five. That's fine. It's an uncommon troll frog warrior. You can pay two and a green mana to adapt to. And each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it has trapple. So you can pay... Already, 5 mana, 5-5, five, five, play it. Each creature you control with plus one, plus one counter on its trample. Cool, even better, again, in Simic or Gruul. That's really good. Uh, and I can turn into a 7-7 seven, seven with trample, mind you, because each creature you control with a counter on it has trample. So definitely play a Trollbred Guardian. A couple of these in my 5 drops slot would be real decent. Wilderness Reclamation, 3 generic mana and a green. Uh, for an uncommon enchantment, at the beginning of your end step, untap all lands you control. This is a little bit more geared towards the Simic side of things, simply for the fact that adapting is instant speed, and they have a few more flash creatures, right? Um, Gruul, it would be nice. There are some instant speed. Yeah, this is, is a real good card. Uh, we haven't seen this effect in standard a ton. Uh, the fact that it's a single green mana is big. Uh, there's going to be a lot of flash creatures. You can cast your sorcery speed... Uh, sorry, your, your your removal you get to untap for on their turn. You can tap out for creatures on your turn, untap, and have all your mana up for removal on their turn. Um, uh, just as far as limited goes, it's more of a Simic card. Um, but as far as go, that, I think this could make it into standard into that Jun deck because you tap out for a creature or planeswalker or whatever on your turn, you untap, and you have all your removal up from there. Um, so you get to do stuff on your turn, do st and prevent your opponent, or just kill your opponent's things on their turn. That's real good. Um, again, standard is good. Limited is good in a certain situation. Um, 
being that in Simic, like I said, you have all your adapt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nexus is, is just... Yeah. <laughs> doesn't help that deck. Uh, well, it, it helps that deck, but it doesn't help it be less any uh, less of a problem, I should say. Um, but anyway, yeah. So, Wilderness Reclamation, solid card. Uh, Wrecking Beast, five generic mana and two green for a common 6-6 six, six, uh, with Riot and Trample. So, for seven mana, you could probably get a ramp creature or two out. Um, you get a 7-7 seven, seven with Trample or a 6-6 six, six with Haste and Trample. It's fine. Play it. It's good. <laughs> and our final Gruul card. Yeah, next fate to just, no, I don't need to I don't need to hear about these things, man. Turn five, turn five Nexus. I don't need to I don't need that kind of stuff in my life. Uh final Gruul card. Uh, keep in mind we have the artifacts and lands to quickly go over next as well. Then we'll be done for the night. Uh Jurta Goblin is a red and a green for a 2-2 uncommon goblin berserker with riot so it's a 2-2 with haste or it's a 3-3 for two both of which are good um sl sp splashable for words uh, or of course just you're playing this in your gruel for your two drop all right the last folder of card images to open for the night is artifacts and lands so most of these is just gonna be talking about a little bit about the art some of the artifacts are are cool but let's just have a look at some art uh, talk about, I'll show you my favorite personal gate. You can probably already guess it, but Zorius Guild Gate. All the guild gates, if you're not familiar, they are dual colored for their guild, and they enter the battlefield tapped. Uh, we've already seen a bunch of guild of gates matter cards, so something to keep in mind there. But Zorius Guild Gate, really cool. Um, I pro which art do you prefer? This one? It's like the Optometrist. This one? Or this one? Number one? Or number two? Uh, I like number two better. It's a little more closer up, a little more detailed. You can see the signets hiding around, or the, the guild symbols hiding around. I like this one. Zorius Locket. If you aren't familiar with the lockets, uh, they are all three mana. They tap for either color of their guild, and you they cost four hybrid mana of their guild. So in this case, the Azorius Locket costs a blue or a white, another blue or a white, another blue or a white, or another blue or a white, and tap it, sack it, and draw two cards. They're probably one of the better... It doesn't help ramp you as much as the Signets did. The Signets were real good. Um, the Lockets, I feel the, the best about. They're just a good fit. Um, if you're splashing in color and you get a Locket in your splash color, awesome. Even worth including, like, one is a 20 to 23rd card if you're just going two color as well, just for the card draw. Uh, and the slight ramp as well. But uh, all the Lockets do that, and this is the Azorius version of that. Blood Crypt, our Shocklands, like we knew about before, are back. Blood Crypt is something that the Jund decks, the Rakdos decks, anything that's playing Black Raider would be really happy to see. Um, they want to get their cards up quick, and they want to get them out aggressively, so they want both colors of mana as soon as they can get them. Blood Crypt helps you do that. So all the five colors we didn't get before, we're getting this time. So we're getting the Red-Black Duel, the Blue-Green Duel, the Black-White Duel, the Green-Red Duel, and the other one, the Blue-White Duel. Breeding Pool is the uh, Simic Pain, uh, Simic Shockland. Beautiful Forest. These, if you haven't seen these, these are the guild decks uh, that they sell. Um, they're really good value. They're about 30 bucks usually for a deck that contains some old cards from the guild. Basically throughout the guild history, all the way back to original Ravna, you get reprints from that. And all the lands in those decks are these really cool, nice alternate art lands. Um, this one looks like it's from the Gruul. I have myself picked up the Demir and the Izzet decks, and the lands are so pretty out of both of those. Um, so this is the Simic Forest, then. Uh, Gate Colossus is one of the cards to talk about. It's 8 mana for an 8-8 eight, eight uncommon artifact creature construct, a generic mana. The spell costs 1 less for each uh, gate you control. Gate Colossus can't be blocked by creatures of power 2 or less. Cannot be chumped. Whenever a gate enters the battlefield under your control, you may put Gate Colossus from your graveyard on top of your library. So... Potentially, it's an 8-8 eight, eight for 6 that can't be chumped. It was pretty good. I'd play a copy of it, for sure. Especially in a 3-color deck where you're playing, like, 3-4 gates. Uh, Gateway Plaza, speaking of gate, counts as one. The new names? <laughs> the Rack Duel, the Bleen, the Bleat, the Woo, and the Gred. Yep. Yep, yep. That's what they're called now. My personal favorite, the Bleen. 
Uh, Gateway Plaza, print in the last set if you're not familiar with it. It's generic, uh, sorry, it's common land, it's, it counts as a gate, enters tapped. When it enters, pay one uh, generic or sack it, and then, but then after that, it taps for one of any mana color. Uh, Glass of the Guild Pact. Really cool art on this. Foil would look really pretty, I feel like. It's two generic mana for a rare artifact. Multicolored creatures you control get plus one, plus one. If you haven't been paying attention, there's several multicolored creatures in this set. If you were playing a lot of them, this is a really good card. Godless Shrine. Probably, you know, me being Azor me being Azorius. Jeez, it's time for bed. Me being Orzhov. This is probably one of my favorites. But not my favorite art. You'll see my favorite art in a moment. Uh, Gruel Guildgate. There's this one with the archway. This one is my favorite. This one is my favorite. Like, full stop favorite. Because all the, the there's all kinds of rules on Ravnica, and one is you need a you need an entryway to the to the guild territory. You need a nice gate. It needs to be organized. And Gruel is just like, we need a gate. Hey, leave that one. This is their gate. Just, it's a gate. Hey, you, you said we needed a gate. This is it. It's a gate. This is what you asked for. Check that box, bud. No, keep going. Check the box and keep on your way. Anyway, yeah, this, this is my favorite. Uh, the Gruel Locket. The Hallowed Fountain is the blue-white shockland. Island, again, this is the Azorius one. It's so pretty. And you can see the, the set symbol changes as well. So here you have the Simic symbol. There you have the Azorius symbol. Uh, Junk Troller is 4 generic mana for an uncommon 0-6 artifact creature Golem is 0-6 defender. Put target card from a graveyard on the bottom of Soldier's Library. Eh? Like, it prevents you, helps you prevent from being milled out, but for, it's a lot for 0-6 even, so I'm not, I'm not a fan. The Rakdos Mountain is so pretty. Uh, and the Gruel Mountain. The Orzhov Guildgates. Yeah, even though this one looks more opulent and more Orzhov-y, I like this one better. Uh, the Orzhov Locket, a.k.a. the Millennium Falcon. It even has a satellite dish flipped up. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. Millennium Falcon. Zorius Plains. Uh, the Orzhov Plains. Plaza of Harmony is the new rare land for this set. When it enters the battlefield, if you control two or more gates, you gain three life. You can tap to add a generic, sorry, specifically a colorless mana, um, or tap to add one mana of any type that a gate you control could produce. Keep in mind, if you control Gateway Plaza, that is a gate that can produce any color of mana, so then Plaza of Harmony can immediately produce any color of mana. The Rakdos Guild Gate. So this one, this one I actually like the, the wide view better, just because you get the symbol, you get the, the circus feel of it better with this art, so I prefer the wide shot on the Rakdos Guildgate. The Rakdos Locket. Scrabbling Claws is one generic mana for a uh, artifact that is uncommon. You can tap it. Target player exiles a card from their graveyard. Okay. Sacrifice it. Uh, exile target card from a graveyard and draw a card. That's fine. Like, if you want to play it for the draw card, you can throw it in any deck to just draw one whenever you want. There's been worse ways to do that. Screaming Shield. Scrabbling Claws is a reprint? Or Rakdos Locket. Because it's not a reprint, but... No, I'm just kidding. Um, hmm. Did not know that. You'll learn something new every day. Screaming Shield is interesting. Uh, has potentially interesting limited applications. It's generic mana for an uncommon uh, artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus O plus three and has the ability pay two and tap. Target creature puts the top three cards of their library into their graveyard. So in limited, this, is, this can mill somebody out pretty quick and helps block. And then on the end of their turn, just tap it, mill them some. This is kind of cool because it's a bit of a scalpel because uh, there's a lot of. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, I can see that. The the vibe is very mirrored in -y. Um. It's, it's an, again, it's a bit of a scalpel. There's a lot of graveyard stuff going on right now. Um, so anytime somebody wants to target something in there to reanimate it with, say, a five mana saga, for example, or um, if you just want to shrink some some drakes, obviously not crackling drake because that counts exile. But if you want to, there's graveyard things. This will help solve a few of them. It's a one mana, and you can just 
help keep your opponent's graveyard in check, basically. Screaming Shield, Simic Guildgate. For this one, I, I like the, the wide view for this one as well. Uh, it just provides the cityscape with Simic, whereas the other art... Uh, where are we? This one, this could be, like, anywhere. This could be Ixalan, this could be, you know... This could be a lot of different places, whereas this, this is the Simic, the, the Manta flying creatures is really cool. So I prefer that art myself. Um, Simic Locket, Sphinx of the Guild Pact, is a 7 generic mana for a 5-5. Five, five. It is a uncommon Sphinx as an artifact creature. It is all colors. It has flying, and it has hexproof for monocolored. So 7 mana 5-5 five, five is a little expensive, granted, but it has hexproof for monocolored. There are some kill spells uh, that will just multicolored things like Mortify that will get a hold of it but other than that it's a little hard to get rid of I'd, if I had a copy of this I'd play it it doesn't matter what mana you have it goes in literally any deck um, don't try and put it it can't be you know um, pacified with a monocolor pacifism or anything like that um, so it, it dodges a lot of removal out of the set and it's a flyer that's a, one of the bigger flyers in the set other than like Rakdos I think that's about it and potentially the, the flying jellyfish snake hydra thing. Uh, Stomping Ground is the last of our Shocklands for the set. We'll see our last two swamps, the Orzhov one and the Rakdos one. And the very last card is Tome of the Guild Pact. Five generic mana for a rare artifact. Whenever you cast a multicolored spell, draw a card, and you tap it to add one mana of any color. Uh, I'm not including this if I'm playing two colored. If I'm playing three colored, I'd probably actually include this as maybe this would be like a 20 to 23rd card as well. But um, yeah, so that is it. Clocking in at just under five hours, we have reviewed. And thank you very much. I really appreciate the company uh, help keeping me on my toes and stuff. Um, we have reviewed every single card in. Uh, Ravnica Allegiances. This will be, it'll give me a couple days to cut this into the individual guilds and videos, and it'll go up on YouTube as well. The VOD will be up on Twitch right away. Um, but yeah, look at us go. We'll send you a bit. You know, I'm not paying it, right? Just saying. Just saying. Anyway, um, we'll thank you guys so much if you're watching this on YouTube. What did you think about some of the some of the cards we talked about? About, like, Tesa, Domri, um, any other big splashy things you think are going to be really good, or you think I'm really wrong? I'm open to being wrong. I love talking about this stuff and s finding new lines that I didn't know about, right? It's a very complex game, and that's why I think we like it, right? Um, but yeah, thanks you all so much for joining me. Really appreciate it. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what you thought about these cards. Um, can't wait to hear from you. If you're, if you can throw a follow on Twitch as well if you're watching this after fact on YouTube. But thank you guys so much. This has been Gas City Gaming. My name's Dave. Thank you for tuning in to the Ravnica Allegiance set review. I will see you all again. Have an awesome, awesome rest of your day. Bye.